Hello, Gunner James 105. So I have a little bit of a story to tell you before I get into the uh, uh, presentation of the items that I received just recently. Um, my channel is uh, approaching a thousand subscribers, which is pretty cool. I I remember when I had one, and uh, I don't mind mentioning that it was uh, C J Campbell who uh, had done a video on how to make your own YouTube channel, and so I took a lot of his advice and I. And I started out because I, I valued all the videos I was seeing. And I, and I thought it was pretty neat that I could uh, gather a lot of information. And I thought, well, heck, I've got, I've got tons of uh, items. And, I, and it, it keeps growing because as the years go, and I don't know if it's been four years now. I can't remember how, when I started. But um, you, because of my passion for this collecting thing, I, it, it never seems to end because I, I come across stuff here, there, and everywhere and uh, add it to the collection. So there's an endless supply of things I can... Uh, talk about and uh, show you that in some cases um, it may be the only video of this particular item on the internet so um, I'm happy about that and I and I uh, have to say that uh, my channel is, is small enough I don't I don't think that my channel is ever going to uh, uh, take off to the point where I can't answer every single comment and, I, and I've been trying to do that. I, I, I don't believe I've missed anybody and if I have then it's due to some fault in the system but I certainly appreciate you commenting and I, I, I really feel that I, I want to respond to all the comments I, I sincerely and so um, it brings me to a particular um, subscriber who recently has been following my uh, has subscribed and been following a lot of my videos and turns out uh, and I'll explain to you why but this fella um, is about my age uh, a few months older than me apparently uh, his name is George and George has has um, found value in, in my uh, videos has commented on things his family history has a lot of military involvement in particular his father who has served in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Um, he's passed away some years ago, sadly, but um, it is something that is in his, in his family's history that uh, a lot of this stuff, and he, and he, he collects, and he, uh, he has military uh, rifles, and he shoots, and he, so he is a, a true enthusiast. And I know all of this because there was a attempt by George to send me some items that he, he wanted me to have. Um, from what I understand, because certainly I feel that if something is of some sentimental value, something that belongs to your a family member or had belonged to a family member that has a history, then you should pass that down. You should, you should tell a story, um, that sort of thing. And so in this particular case though, I believe the items that he had that he wanted to send were picked up at, I don't know if, I can't remember if it was a, um, or if it was given to his wife or she found it at a garage sale or what exactly. So it didn't have any sentimental value, but um, certainly um, these items, these military items as, as they turn out to be, are uh, uh, quite impressive. I had seen just a, a, a photo or two, and again, I still have to explain to you how I've seen this and how I've, I know these things. Uh, I guess I should spill the beans now. Through the help of a um, YouTube channel that is is quite popular, one of my favorites. Um, I won't name the channel because I'm I'm not I haven't asked been asked or I haven't asked for permission to uh, say who helped me out in this. But through Facebook, I was able to have where I could contact this person who has a channel on YouTube. And he was able to get a hold of George's wife, who has, who's on Facebook, to get my phone number so that he could call me, or I could I got his number to call him. And so I appreciate uh, the anonymous um, YouTuber who's got more subscribers and more. He does military as well. Uh, very fine channel. Um, so at some point I may reveal if he lets me. But in the meantime, I get talking to George on the phone. So he's in Massachusetts. 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 I have a hard time with that. Uh, and so he has spoken to me a couple times on the phone. 
And uh, so we've, we've, we've and, and the conversation can go on for about an hour because we, we have a lot of the same interests and a lot of things to talk about. So to make this, uh, to, to maybe make this, uh, the, uh, the uh, closing statements on this, on this story is that through the phone call and everything else, he wanted me to have these items. And so then I, I was able to provide my address and he was able to send it. And so it was, it was two weeks of, uh, I think, agony for, for uh, George because uh, the mail process is slow and what if it got lost and, and all that sort of thing. Well, it, it did arrive last Thursday. So it was, it was very exciting for me and I was very happy to finally be able to send him a message that the package had arrived, huge relief. And so um, thanks very much, George. And I'm going to uh, now uh, skip around to the other side of this table and, and uh, show these items that you sent. Um, I had actually, if, if one were to uh, do an unboxing, um, it would be a little difficult for me since I didn't know exactly what I was getting. And so to present something as well, uh, yeah, I've got this, uh, don't know what it is, but uh, so I did a little research on some things. I have a little bit of information and uh, if, if it should warrant, uh, and it may, these, some items may show up in a later video, a little more detail, but for now we'll, we'll go with what we got. And so I'll just slip around to the other side there and we'll, uh, we'll go through it. So we'll just do one of these. And so, get that out of the way. So first up, one, one might say is a, uh, a minor, a little ding there from a message. I'm using my cell phone to record. But this then, of course, is recognizable as the M1 helmet uh, band, your headband, and it looks to have never been used. Everything's all there, and it's a, a newer model. So it's kind of funny because it says, it says George right there, focuses, so George. So this has the clips and everything, so that's pretty cool. I have M1 helmets, and uh, it's always good to have a spare or these clips or whatever in case something breaks, so that was just one one of the items for sure. Now, moving on to uh, uh, something that, uh, I've got three things. That one is not military, and two, I just don't know what the heck they are. So, um, the first thing I'll show you, this here, now from what I can gather, and so this 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 here, just interesting, very interesting, uh, and uh, I think if I, Turn this here, and I hope things are focusing for us here. But in case it doesn't, this is uh, wherever and um, made in USA, trademark. And so it says aluminum, and it's a nice heavy aluminum, a nice, nice good sturdy aluminum. And what I understand through searches is this is a... Uh, miner's lunch pail and uh so it's got taku or whatever company is part of the symbol and it also has uh, the model of this so this is a number 1102 because they would have certain products with certain product numbers and this apparently is from around 1910 so nice little little uh Container. I don't know that you'd necessarily. Well, I mean, I suppose you could cook with that if you had to, or warm something up. But so that was a that was one of the items that was in there. And then uh, moving on to another aluminum product is this here. Now this one, being the uh, meat can, I always used to call these mess kits. They're always mess kit to me in my entire life. And I started doing a little more research and finding out that I guess the proper terminology is meat can, or or after World War Two. Uh, meat plate i'm not i'm not sure but uh so this one is aluminum they kind of went back and forth with the uh the metal and the aluminum and uh so in very good condition and dated so we've got ma company 1943 us so i don't know if i bring that closer helps at all and so uh 
as I say, very, very nice World War II item. Quite incredible. Love it. I, uh, I got, or I had an opportunity because I had another mess kit that I had bought uh, many years ago. And uh, what it turned out was, the, was, you know, I wanted to get a hold of some a knife, fork, and spoon. So I'm just sitting off the side there. Of course, you saw these. But um, now these, I'm not sure. They, they pretty much stay, stayed the same all the way through World War II and, and uh, Korea, Vietnam. I wanted to get a set, and it turned out there was a seller that had uh, three sets. So with my uh, my other meat can, I've got a set for it. Now I've got a set to go with what George sent me, and I guess I have uh, a set for another uh, mess kit or meat meat can uh, if it should come up. And so now, continuing into the theme of aluminum, these are something that I have no idea. Is that a military item? Is it civilian? What's it for? I can't find anything anywhere on this, but um, of course it's got it's got the uh, little threaded top that squeaks, and then uh, yeah, so a little cork. The cork um, seal is on still there for both of them. And it looks to be the original. So if anybody knows what the heck these are, have any idea at all, all I can see on them is um, there's just a tiny little, I believe it's M. Uh, darn, I should have wrote that down. Can't quite make out what that is, but maybe you can see it if it focuses. So there was these, and so, yeah, I just, I really, I have no idea. They're old, it would appear. So, now, moving on, I should say that all of this stuff was sent to me in a box, and all of the items were in a duffel bag. So I removed the, uh, the wrapping from the box and pulled out the duffel bag, and it's a... Nice full-size duffel bag. Condition is great. You know, I mean, you've got something that, of course, you're going to set it down here and it's going to get dirty because you're putting it wherever, uh, train station, this, that, whatever. A uh, couple little holes, no big deal. And the reason it's no big deal is that if I were to go here and show you this label, so there's your bag barrack. Sure, no. I've got my glasses, but I know that it says right about there. And that's February 3rd, 1944. So this would be a uh, genuine World War II U.S. military duffel bag. Now, the bonus, the absolute bonus, are these, these tags. Maybe that maybe that's a relative of yours. Maybe you know who this is. So we have I gotta grab my glasses. One sec. I can see far, but I can't see that close. So yeah, Railway Express Agency. And So this is 19, you're, uh, the date hasn't been filled in, but so you have the date would be here, 1940 something. And then there's these, so this says South Station Parcel Room, and there's a number. So these would be claim tags, I imagine. But uh, here also is quite incredible. So we've got that. So war won't wait. Railway Express provides fast transportation for the things the nation needs to win the war and for vital home front necessities too. So, pretty incredible, I must say. And uh, yeah, so this, I, I don't have anything like this at all in the collection till now. So now we'll get to uh, some of the things that, uh, starting with, with these. 
Now these look to be NOS or new old stock, never issued. And they've got six month, six day of 1942. Very clear markings. Everything is just like brand new. And so there's your uh, your size. Um, I think early on they had um, certainly, um, this would be referred to as regular, and they had uh, uh, an L for large, at regular, and then an S for, for short. So depending on the, on the soldier, uh, his build. And uh, then there was one to four as far as the calf size. So that's what that was uh, referring to. So... I believe I've seen quite a few of these and 3R seems to be the most common uh, for size that doesn't have any laces. And I thought to myself, you know, if I had got some uh, of that green paracord, I could probably put that lace in there. It's about, a, I know it's supposed to be three feet long, that lace. But uh, yeah, these are, these are uh, in, in beautiful condition. So there's the, the piece that would go underneath, just in front of the heel. So these would be referred to as legging canvas M1938 dismounted. And so, you know, you, that, that's the official designation, uh, putties or gaiters, uh, I've always known them to be. So there's that pair, and they're a matching, matching pair, same date and everything. So very nice. The uh, next item, again, something I've, I've never, never had in the collection, is uh, this little what they call a, a, a ditty bag for personal effects? So it could be, it could be uh, any of your toiletries and that sort of thing. And this was handed out train stations, bus stations, whatever uh, was through the volunteers with the uh, Red Cross. And this is a World War II item. So here we have the uh, the chapter, and I can't quite make it out, but uh, there was different chapters of the. American Red Cross. So this tag is showing me uh, the American Red Cross, and uh, with a you know a couple of drawstrings in very very nice condition. Just it was almost like new, and that's that's a fairly fairly old item that uh, has survived. And I think down the bottom, what the heck was down there again? Yeah, there was a, a shoelace I found in the bottom of that bag. So yes, the uh, World War II personal items, I guess, uh, distributed by volunteers from the Red Cross. The next item, uh, and and as I say, I, I do not have any of this until now in the collection. Um, this one here is the, uh, this is World War I. So this is a uh, U.S. World War I, so this would be the M1917 uh, gas mask bag, so the SBR or small box respirator. This is the carry bag for that gas mask. And uh, it looks to be all complete. We've got um, the uh, push the dot type fasteners, which are in great condition. There's this marking, which I cannot identify. I don't know what that, it's almost like a, a kind of a check mark with an A. I, I don't know if anybody knows about that. You can let me know. And it has the string. So this string then, works very similar to the British um, gas mask bags that uh, we're familiar with, the Indiana Jones bag. So we've got this strap then, of course, that would go across the back of the neck with this piece here in which the string then would, would come around the back and over and through and around the other side and be tied so that your uh, uh, carrier would not be flopping around as you would run. And uh, I know there's this, this little piece here that I'm, I'm not sure what, what that's for. Do not know. And uh, that's my theory anyways. I, I haven't uh, you know, looked into it any further than the fact that I know that this was a lot of the stuff that I think even the gas mask initially was a, a British type gas mask that they were using in World War I. But in very nice condition, um, we look inside, we've got these numbers. I can't find a date on it. It may have faded away. And then we've got the two compartments, one for the, uh, try and open that, 
So we've got one for the mask and one for the canister. So that's that. So very, very nice. Very nice. Next, I have, and I thought this was World War I. And this one here, um, turns out, was prior to World War I. So this here would be referred to as the, uh, I think it's M1970, or, yeah, M 1978. They had, a, they had another pattern before this that was similar, but it was smaller. I think it was more of a, that was the M1874. So this is the uh, 1878 Haversack, and it was changed uh, around 1903, 1904 again for, uh, for another reason. But uh, so this would be uh, something that was used, let's say, in the, uh, during the time of the Spanish-American War. And it was more of a, a lighter uh, day-use type uh, Haversack. So you'd have where... You can see here we've got a couple of D-rings, and so there'd be a shoulder strap. So you just have that over the shoulder. Um, later on, they were um, changing that so you could wear it as a backpack. But as it is, the um, uh, this this particular one, so the big U.S. on there, very nice, very nicely. Uh, sorry about. I gotta get this camera. Whoops, not, not knock it off table, but there we go. And so when I flip this open. There's um, some initials, so I've got an MB, that's actually my uncle's uh, initials, not really, but that is. And then we've got uh, Rock Island Arsenal, and that's who made, I think most of these, started making these. There's a, uh, it's, it's fairly tarnished, there's a button, and that's, uh, that's for this separate pouch up front. And I believe it was in here that you would put your... Uh, your meat can, not not that type, but uh, the earlier style, of course. And then inside, we have these um, little side pouches here and here. And as far as I can tell, there were little leather sheaths that your knife, fork, and spoon would fit into, and then you would stick them in here just to protect the uh, uh, bag from being punctured by uh, the knife, fork, and spoon. And so they have uh, basically two separate compartments in there and uh, what they did and then there's your buckle and strap for the box there for that flap so you can fill that right up and let's see if we fill that up and have that come around like so you know it'll uh, you can fit quite a few items they, they came with um, you know so you can put your your meat can in there and they came with these uh, uh, white canvas bags. You, you you were issued a couple of white canvas bags to put your your food in, and uh, so they they had that. Nineteen. They, what what the the change was about uh, around nineteen oh three was the fact that the uh, U.S. Uh, Springfield rifle. They were trying to get that into uh, play, and they they had the uh, the belt. So the ammo belt uh, for that for that rifle that they were changing these D-rings to a, like a snap hook so that we they could be connected to that uh, web belt. I should have brought my web belt. I've got one from, from I think it's dated 1916, but it's that old 1903 type uh, cartridge belt for the Springfield rifle. And, uh, but things got delayed with that Springfield rifle, um, and uh, they never really made those changes till about 1906. And uh, this then was later replaced by the 1910 uh, backpack, um, which was worn on the back. They did, they did, some of these did have a strap, a couple of straps you could throw, put it on your back in the later years, around those, you know, into the early 1900s. And so uh, that's about all I can see, uh, you know, regarding the... Uh, this one here, I wish there was a date on it. I mean, the, the Spanish-American War was April to December of 1898. And uh, so it'd be kind of neat if this was in that era. It is. This is one of the early ones, that's for sure, because of the, 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 the way it's made. So I, I know this is, this is the older pattern. And so, yeah, again, absolutely beautiful. And then uh, the last item 
which we've got here is US and we've got uh, last name Libby and this would be his uh, his number. So this would be the M1936, uh, 36, 36 Musette bag. Um, mostly officers and um, uh, airborne troops, vehicle crews would have one of these. It's it's something that, um, now this this here is used to fasten to your, your webbing to um, have this on your back, carry this on your back. But what we've got, and I believe the uh, this pouch here often contained the strap that you would use to uh, uh, clamp on this, this section of webbing from here to here or in between these two so you could just carry that over your shoulder. So there, there's this uh, nice little metal button. This thing's in beautiful condition. The, these here then also would strap to your, uh, your belt. So once you had that go over your, your shoulder and hook onto your, your shoulder webbing, and uh, so there's the pocket there with the button. And we've got this, the closure straps um, inside. So it, it's, it's like about that big. So it's, it's not much uh, smaller, about the same size as the British haversack, Canadian haversack. And we've got this, which I do not know. So if anybody knows why that's there, let me know. And we've got another pouch or uh, pocket there. And then we've got a separate one here, separate one here. So we've got a lot of dividers to divide things up. And of course your meat can is gonna go into one of these uh, spots. And what's quite incredible is that on this one here, and it's very clear, let's flip it around. So we have the, uh, Manufacturer, so it's a uh, varied manufacturing company, is that's what I read, 1942. And so the condition again is just absolutely fantastic for something that's uh, that old. Uh, I, I love that the markings are all there and that this is a named named bag. So the uh, the end. Oh, <laughs> sorry, one more item, and this is this is for. Uh, uh, also, uh, can we solve this puzzle? So this item here, this item here, now since most everything that's been sent to me is military, this, it's, uh, it's kind of a light canvas, and it's two pouches. So we've got this, wider pouch. And I think I measured that at something like about seven by 19 and a half. And I'm trying to remember now we got four inches by about 25 or so on this pouch. We have the leather. Now this would have been fastened. So as a carry handle and we have the, uh, this is intact. This is broken, but this is, this is, it's all, it's almost all there. There's, there's just that, uh, the fact that this piece here is broken away. From the from the buckle. Now, what's interesting? Um, we've got, and this is this is all canvas, just in a different color, as far as I can tell. But these are leather, and you can see this symbol. And that symbol appears here. It's a little darker, a little dirtier, or whatever. So the question is, what is this for? because I can't find it anywhere on the internet or otherwise. So what I, and I, I should say what I think that looks like. I mean, I think it looks like a chrysanthemum. That's what George had mentioned earlier before I received these is he thought that that was a chrysanthemum. That's what it looks like. So could this be Japanese? And could this be, because I had a theory. And the only thing I can figure is that it would be for a rifle, perhaps, that would be um, taken apart so that the barrel would fit in this longer piece and then the receiver, etc., would fit in this piece. And could it be that this is from a Type 99 paratrooper rifle, 
uh, Japanese uh, Type 99 paratrooper in which the, the two halves might, and as far as I can measure, when I, when I took measurements, um, I don't have that rifle, but I, I, I checked it out to see, would it fit in these two pouches? Actually, yes. So, mystery item. And so we'll end this video. Uh, I have to say, I can't thank George enough. This is the most incredible gift anybody's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I've never met George. I've, I've, I have a, um, he sent me pictures of his, um, his um, family, his wife and, and uh, his two boys and, and uh, I think two boys, sorry, if I got that wrong, uh, his two children, I should say. And so, um, yeah, so, and pictures of his dad too. Pictures of his dad when he was in World War II and um, uh, pretty, pretty incredible. So thank you, George. Uh, thank you very much. So for now, thanks for watching.